King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Well, last week we looked at Jesus rising from the dead, and the Lord is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We looked at also the great blessings and promises that attend his resurrection, namely that we too will rise from the dead, that we will have glorified bodies according to his promise, his word, that one day all death and all suffering will pass away, that there will be a new world in which righteousness dwells, and that the Lord will be with us, the King, forevermore face to face. That's exciting. But what I'd like to talk about today is when will all these things come to pass? Uh, how do we wait patiently and have our hopes still burning brightly at His coming? I mean, we've been celebrating these things since we were little children. The Easter season, the resurrection season. When will these things come to pass? We haven't yet seen them with our eyes. How do we keep our hope alive until then? What does God do to encourage us, to comfort us, and to excite our faith that we be brightly shining at His return to earth. Well, first of all, if we are wondering how long it's going to be till the Lord comes, that is a very common question in Scripture. Let me open up and read David here in Psalm uh, 13. He says, How long, O Lord, wilt thou forget me forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul? And have sorrow in my heart all the day. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? You ever feel like that? <laughs> How long, O oh Lord? I've been waiting for you since childhood. I've heard about this every Sunday. When, when, when is this going to come to pass? When will you come and rescue me? Well, how does God answer that question? Does he give us the timing of everything? Well, let's open up to Acts chapter 1 and see, because the apostles are asking about the timing of things. Here in Acts chapter 1, they tell Jesus, just before he goes up to heaven, after his resurrection, it says, when they come together, they asked him, they asked Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? So what are they looking for? Timing. We want to know the timing. We want to set our watch by this. Jesus said to them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has fixed by His own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So, as to the timing of things, how much can we know? Jesus says, It's not for you, even the apostles, to know the exact timing of things. Who knows when the Lord is coming at his uh, great return to the earth, the king? Jesus says, not even the angels in heaven, no, nor even the Son, but the Father alone. There is a fixed and appointed time for everything, but it's a need-to-know basis. We are not classified on top-secret information like that as to exactly when he's coming. <laughs> But God does give us the approximate time of his coming. We're not totally in the dark. We are the wise of the earth. Our eyes are open to it. We can look over here in Mark, Matthew chapter 24. God actually wants us to know the timing of things. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when, there's the word, when will this be? And what will be the sign of your coming in the close of the age? Jesus answered them, Take heed that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not alarmed. This must take place. But the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Verse 14 says, This gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout all the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come from the fig tree learn its lesson verse 32 as soon as it puts forth its branch becomes tender puts forth its leaves you know that summer is near 
So also when you see all these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. So does God want you to know the timing of things in approximations? Yeah, we're supposed to look for things. Remember the days before MapQuest on your phone when you didn't really know how long it'd take you to get somewhere? Of course, MapQuest doesn't always work either, does it? But you'd drive along the highway and you'd see signs, you know, to your destination and you'd get a sense that you're approaching your destination. If you're heading to Orlando and you see signs for Albuquerque, you know you're a long way off. But if you see, you know, Orlando or any of those kinds of signs, you're getting near. So also when you uh, look at the signs that God has given us to look for in the world, as I look at them, we're getting very close to his return. And God gives us these things that we be ready, that we be excited, that we be looking for his arrival, that we not be found asleep, but alert. So in our pain, though, <laughs> in our distress, and since we've been coming to church since we were little babies, a lot of us, and we keep hearing about these things, and we don't see them yet in full view, we might, with David, still cry out, How long, O Lord? How long before I see these things really come to pass? How does God answer our questions about that? Here's the rest of the sermon. Is God uses one little phrase in the Bible over and over and over again when he talks about the timing of things to encourage you, to comfort you, and to excite your faith being ready for Christ's return. What is that little phrase? Anybody know? Well, there's a good one. And another one I think I heard it. In a little while. God says that in a little while, my people, repeatedly throughout his word. Let's take a look at some of those passages right now. For example, you might be thinking, you know, I've been around on this earth for a while. <laughs> How long, O oh Lord, till I get to see my king face to face up there in the kingdom above? Well, God tells you this in James chapter 4. Uh, verse 14, he says, What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. There's already a use of that term. For a little time, just a little while, you're just a wisp of wind, like steam off of the top of a mug of tea, and you're gone. But where are you going to go? According to uh, Psalm 90, Moses says, The years of our life are 70, or maybe by strength, 80. Their span is but toil and trouble. They're soon gone, and we fly away. Where do you fly away? As a Christian, to the king. That's where you're flying away. And Paul says in Philippians 1.23, My desire is to depart and be with Christ. And that's far better. And so, in how long do you have to wait to see the king? Say it out loud with me. In a little while. Now say it with emphasis. In a little while. You get to see your king. This is an encouraging word. Doesn't that not refresh you? That you're going to get to see him with your own eyes in heaven and then at the resurrection very soon. So says the king. Secondly, in the meantime, we're in the middle of a world where there's a lot of evil around us. Do you get depressed by looking at the news and seeing day after day the wickedness of men is multiplied, like Jesus predicted, and violence, bloodshed, injustice, uh, hatred, blasphemy, insulting of our king, and like manner of just terrible things going on in the world? You think that's a new experience for the saints? No. Going back here to David, I look at Psalm 12. This is 1000 A.D. Uh, B.D. B.C. <laughs> thousand years before Christ, he says, Help, Lord, for there is no longer any that is godly. For the faithful have vanished from among the sons of men. Everyone utters lies to his neighbor with flattering lips and a double heart they speak. Do thou, O Lord, protect us. Guard us ever from this generation on every side. The wicked prowl as vileness is exalted among the sons of men. You know, you'd think if you were reading that, David was living in 2019. But that was 1000 B.C. 
And yet, you know, he's waiting. He's saying, how long will the wicked be exalted, O Lord? What's God's answer for that one? In a little while. Let's read that in Isaiah chapter 10, just to prove the point. Israel is suffering here under the hand of the Assyrians. Uh, verses uh, 24 and following. The, Therefore thus says the Lord, O my people who dwell in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians when they smite you with the rod, when they lift up their staff against you as the Egyptians did. For in a very little while, there it is, my indignation will come to an end and my anger will be directed to their destruction. And in that day, his burden will, be de will depart from your shoulder and his yoke will be destroyed from your neck. Thus says the Lord. So how long do you have to wait for the wickedness and vileness of evil men that are ruling today to come to an end? In a little while. If you look over at Psalm 37, the wicked man plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that his day is coming. Yet a little while, there it is again, yet in a little while, the wicked will be no more, though you will look well at his place, will not be there. But the meek shall possess the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. So when you see evil men, injustice, <coughs> bloodshed, violence, the news, and all the other trouble in the world, God comforts and refreshes his people saying, just for a little time. A little while, and the king will set everything aright. So, take courage, my people. Do you take courage from that? Thirdly, we could say, well, not only the trouble that I'm facing with people and all this terrible stuff I see going on around me, but spiritually, I have to fight against the evil one all the time. Do you guys experience like I experience this? I mean, I know my experiences. I feel like every day... The devil is assailing me with like a thousand arrows. They're like raining at me. Fiery arrows like the Bible speaks of. And I get to hold up that shield of faith and, and grab the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and defend and keep my helmet of salvation on. Uh, that I not get all messed up in my mind and vexed in my soul and just all turned around topsy-turvy. I'm, I'm constantly like bang, 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 bang. Do you experience the same thing? How long must this go on? that you have these spirits of, of principalities in dark places in the heavenlies, how long must they attack you? How long must you wield your sword when the battle grows weary and you're like, uh, oh, can I go on? A little while. A little while. For we read here, opening in the Bible again, Revelation chapter uh, 12 says this, now war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they were defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. So that's good for heaven, isn't it? That's good for heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down that ancient servant, who's called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So hurled out of the high places. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down. He who accuses them day and night before God, and they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they loved not their lives even unto death. That's beautiful. This is when Christ conquered Satan at the cross and resurrection. The devil, he's out, and he's thrown down. Rejoice then, O heaven, and you that dwell therein. That's great for them. How about for us? Well, it's great for us too, but woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devils come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. We're more than conquerors to him who loved us, but when he's thrown down, where is he thrown down to? Here. Where are you living? Earth. On earth. Anybody not living on earth today? I will talk with you after church service and have a little counseling session. So the devil's been thrown down to earth, where we are, and he has great wrath. But here's the beautiful news. Because he knows that his time is short. S-H-O-R-T, short, which means a little while. How long do you have to fight against all these temptations and dark spirits that come against you as a Christian? God says, 
Pluck up your courage, O soldiers. Come on, be men of God, because it's only for a short little time. And he's almost crushed already. He's already crushed by Christ. We read in uh, Revelation 20, at the end of time, the devil must be loosed for a little while. There's the verse again. God uses it again. A little while. At the very end of time. It's kind of like in World War II, uh, when Hitler, he's doomed. <laughs> It's over for him, but they have the Battle of the Bulbs, this last push from the Nazis to try to break the ranks of the Allies. Once more, the devil, in the same way, at the end of time, is loosed for a little while. He has one final push to try to save himself, but he's doomed to inevitable destruction, just as was Hitler. And you're living in the Battle of the Bulge, the last little while. But God says, in a few days, you'll be in Berlin. I will see to it that you will march through the streets in triumph, treading upon your enemies. And an imperishable crown is soon to be placed upon your head. How long is that going to take, Ernie? Huh? A little while. That's all it is. And you're going to see just a little while. That's what God tells us. Again, your enemies, just a little while. Number four, how long must I suffer? In this world, I mean, it's a lot of suffering here. We're going through this life. I'm sure nobody here is just all peachy keen today. Peachy keen. Yeah, it's an old word, right? <laughs> My friends. First, First Peter chapter five. Peter says, "Be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering." is required of your brotherhood throughout the world and after you have suffered oh, there it is again a little while a little while then the god of all grace who has caused you to his eternal glory in christ will himself restore establish and strengthen you to him be the dominion forever and ever amen so how long you got to go on suffering as you're going on suffering today the bible says a little while be encouraged, be refreshed, my people. It's not for very long. There's an appointed time for suffering, and there's an appointed time for being reestablished, and guess who's going to do it? God says, I personally, personally will reestablish and strengthen you at the appointed time. And so, if I were to be suffering like forever, I'd be totally destroyed right now. But if it's just for a little while, I can take that. It's just a little while. Very short, it's going to be over, God says. So be courageous and be strong in the middle of it. It's very short. For how long? A little while. What about the promises that are to come? we got an inheritance, says the Bible. You know, we already have part of it, and that we're raised internally, and then we're forgiven, we have a new nature, and all forgiveness of sins in Christ, but you don't have yet your full inheritance. Not all the promises of God have yet come into full view, and been given to you, even though you have them in promise. But there's a day for them to come to pass. Let's open up again, see if I have the page here yet. First Peter, uh, chapter 1 this time. We'll go back to chapter 1. It says, you're, you're born anew to an inheritance which is imperishable. It's undefiled. It's unfading. It's kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are guarded through faith for our salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a, a little while you may have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, which though perishable is tested by fire, may turn into praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. There's an appointed time for suffering. There's an appointed time for you to get your inheritance. And that is coming very quickly to us very soon from God's perspective and very soon you're going to be there before you know it you've lived on the earth for how many years some of you 70 whatever they seemed like they were a long time when you were 8 years old but now that you're 70 or 80 or whatever it's gone by like that you're going to be here at God's promises before you know it so take courage be refreshed in these things says the Lord it's very soon when an imperish, imperishable inheritance is going to be revealed to you. 
And 2 Corinthians 4, Paul says, this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. That's what God's setting you up for, setting you up for. So be excited about that. It's not far away. Be cool, stay the course, endure suffering, God says. The prize is very soon. Now, if you think about it, this phrase, in a little while, is also used in reference to Christ in the Bible. Let's take a look at that one in <coughs> Hebrews chapter 2. We read, of the world to come, that it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come of which we are speaking. Who's going to rule over the world to come? Christ and us. It's not given to angels. It's given to you and to Christ, most especially, us with him. It says, it's been testified somewhere, what's man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou dost care for him? Thou dost make him, in other words, make man for a little while, lower than the angels. Then thou hast crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection, it's plain that he's uh, accepted who put off, sorry, that he's left nothing outside his control, etc. But we see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. So how long was Jesus lower than the angels? A little while. Where is he now? If you were an angel, at least figuratively speaking, if you want to try to see Jesus, you get your binoculars out. And you're like, I can't even see him. He's so high above me, I can't even see him. Now, of course, they do see him. But in terms of his glory, he is so high above them, they couldn't even see him in that sense. And we also, because we're in Christ, are made lower than the angels for a little while. And they are so much greater than we are, but we're the sons of the king. They are like God's marines around the guard of the throne room. But we are the children of God. And when we get to the point appointed where we're old enough, God's going to say, come up and sit with me on my throne, even above angels. Wow. And how long is this going to take? A little while. Christ was down for a little while. Now he's up there. You're down for a little while. Then you're going to be up there where he is. And his suffering, too, is short. Isaiah 54 says, For a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion I'll gather you. An overflowing wrath, for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I'll have, have compassion on you. Says the Lord your Redeemer. So how long did Christ really suffer? A brief moment, just a, a twinkle of an eye, a short couple of hours, hard as they were, but he saved us by those couple of hours. And he's gathered Christ with all compassion. And he's going to do the same for you and me. How long till Jesus comes? Next question. <laughs> I open up my Bible again to Hebrews 10. It says, For yet a little while, and the coming one shall come, and shall not tarry. But my righteous one shall live by faith. That is, until he comes, I'm going to be believing. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and keep their souls. So a little while, and the coming one shall come. It's not long, very short, coming very quickly. And how long really is a little while? <laughs> Jesus uses that phrase right before he goes to the cross with his disciples. He says, John 16, 16, he says, A little while, and you will see me no more. Again, a little while, and you'll see me. So how long will they get to see him? A little while, and how long was that? Well, he's going to be betrayed in an hour. So a little while is like an hour. It's not long. And they got to see him all the way till 3 p.m. the next day when he dies and gets taken down. So that's only a couple of hours. So how long is a, a little while? Short. And how long? In you know, a little while, and you'll not see me. Again, in a little while, and you'll see me. So how long did they not see him that little while? Three days. Three days, according to a Jew. That's counting parts of a day as a full day. If you think Jesus died on 3 p.m., let's do some math. 3 p.m. on Friday. Don't be scared. I'm not good at math either, but let's try it. To 3 p.m. the next day, how many is that? 24 hours. To 3 p.m. the next morning, that's 36 hours. And then if he rises around 7 o'clock, that's... Oh, how did we arrive at that special number again? Four, about 40 hours. A little while and you won't see me. Again, a little while and you'll see me. About 40 hours or so. That's not a long time to wait. And you'll see me again. No one shall take your joy from you in that day, says the Lord. So it's not long. 
So here's the big point for the day, and I hope you can all follow me. Try to put your thinking caps on here. See if you can follow this. Big points, very deep. My point today is a little while is not a long while. <laughs> it's short, very small, a very quick little moment in time. That's all you have to wait until all promises of God are going to come to their fulfillment. How long till we see Jesus at his return? How long is a little while to God? Well, Peter says, Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as a single day. So how long does it take for the Lord, let's say between uh, the beginning of creation till now? Around 6,000 years plus, a little bit. How uh, long is that in God's time? Six days, if it's each day is it a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. Think about this little symmetry problem here, or situation. Adam to Abraham is 2,000 years. Abraham to Christ is 2,000 years. Christ to us is 2,000 years. My, that looks very symmetrical, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Did Abraham have long to wait till the Christ should come who was promised to him? 2,000 years. 2,000 years Christ to us. Six days. And God did what on the, on the seventh day? Rested. Rested. Eternal rest. The Sabbath, Sabbath refreshment of the people of God. I'm thinking it's very, very soon. God seems to work every 2,000 years on these major movements. And we're next about that. It's 2019. Think about it. We don't know the exact time or the day or the hour. But we know it's coming soon. And how long do we have to repent? <laughs> a little while. We're not even, shouldn't even count on or bank on tomorrow. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Repent, says the Lord, to all the world. You don't know if you even have a tomorrow. Today, repent. This is the only day you know about. And God is open. His, his kingdom is wide open if you come to him through Christ. And he may seem like he's just sitting around, but believe me, when God gets up to come, he comes fast. It's sort of like an eagle sitting on a nest, and he sits there for hours, and you're like, does this bird ever fly? I mean, it's just sitting there forever. But when that eagle stirs itself up and takes its wings to the air, it comes down to the earth, it flies like a bolt of lightning. And that's how God is going to come. When he comes, even if it's been a while, when he gets up to fly, he comes quickly, says the scriptures. Come, my people, Isaiah 26. Enter your chambers. Shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until my wrath is past, says the Lord. Behold, the Lord is coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth will dis disclose the blood shed upon her and will no more cover her slain. How long do we have to wait then for God's wrath to come? And how long do we have to wait for the resurrection to come? The verse right before that says, Thy dead shall live, their bodies shall rise. Dwellers in the dust awake and sing for joy. For thy dew is a dew of light. And on the land of the shades thou wilt let it fall. Jesus says, Because I live, you shall live also. And that's going to come and be here before you know it. You're going to be looking at each other on that day like, Wow, you're shining like the sun. And so are you. And we thought this would take forever. And here we are. Here we are. Jesus says, I'm coming, as Vivian said, soon. And hold fast what you have, my children, so that no one may seize your crown. So are you excited? Yeah. yeah. Think about this. Last thing I'll say is this. How long will forever last? Answer? Not a little while. <laughs> this is going to be, there's nothing short about it. When God brings his promises, it's peace, friends, forevermore. We're on the very cusp of eternity. The edge, says God. The welcome mat to forever is before you and under your feet. The king is at the gates. So God says, therefore, endure with joy. The ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy 
I shall crown you with. And in my kingdom there shall be no more any of these accursed things. But you shall see my face. And my name I will write upon your own foreheads. And there's going to be no more nights there. You need no more light of lamps or sun. For I, the Lord your God, personally will be your light. And you, with me, shall reign forever and ever. Amen.